Last split, I was definitely feeling pretty, pretty down. I was kind of glad that it was over in a way so I could kind of collect myself again and reflect on what happened. It was feeling really hard to recover. So I, I really think that this team is different and everyone on this team really wants to win. I think that's one of the most valuable things to have on a team is all five players are really putting in their 100% and see the same goal and are putting in the same amount of work and effort. And I think that this is the team that will do that and we will not fail again. Ladies and gentlemen, this immortal squad came to play in summer. Well, all right there, mortals. Yeah. My palms are sweaty after that. I uh, know. <laughs> uh, I hadn't seen that one before the show kicked off. Welcome back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you so much to Immortals Progressive for insight on their roster. Uh, now, they're only minutes away uh, from taking on spring semifinalists in Team Liquid Honda. So, so that's going to be a tough bout here to kick things off. Uh, but I kind of want to start uh, with some of what <laughs> Revenge was just talking yeah. about. Uh, finding a roster of five players who are all committed to the same goal, the same vision. We know that the org itself has been committed to him individually as a player, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's nice to now hear him start to talk about the, the rest of the, the crew around him and feeling like, this is it. This is the roster. Failure, not going to happen. I mean, even just the work ethic comment yeah, about like, you know, oof. fair enough, like coming off Academy, lost leaving Golden Guardians, and then Ignar coming back onto a team, like, they're all probably pretty hungry to his point. So that, that's something that's interesting to hear about. Yeah, and I feel like the a lot of the losses that you look back on IMT in the previous split were just like heartbreaks. Oh, God. Just right yeah. next to the finish line. Oh, broke my ankle. <laughs> like, it's, like, <laughs> it's something. It was always something where they weren't on the same page. The team fights felt like as if they were seeing the fights differently. Um, and at times, it's not even a communication thing. It's more so like we're just not on the same page ever, and you're scrimming with these guys like throughout the entire split. So, you know, you bring in, bring in three extra players now. You have Ignar, Lost, uh, and Kendi, and that just might be the trick. So, exactly, three new players. Yes. That's a big shuffle yep. uh, between one split to the next. So, so what are we hoping for, at, at least in these initial weeks, to see out of Immortals that's going to kind of give us that faith that they'll live up to some strong words that Revenge just uh, put forth? I mean, if it looks like they all want to play the game in a very similar way, I think is going to be key. Because, again, like, we watched this team. They would have some, like, really amazing starts and then it would fall apart when it's like okay how do we play around this like we have this fed cassiopeia how do we play around that we have a fed camille in side lanes are we leveraging that like properly against what the rest of the team is doing so for me it's definitely that like our players wanting to execute the same game plan absolutely and there's no question in my mind what ignar wants to do oh yeah <laughs> yeah so <Blank>. like exactly <laughs> blank mate i'm coming towards you and, karma and, and why, honestly, not? Why, not? why not how do we get there there we go we gotta do it hey Hillison loves himself i want, I want to of, see of blanking uh, zillion so there, yeah, there you go but honestly no like ignar and and um uh power of evil have worked together and we're in the finals mm -hmm. when they were in fly quest uh, and so like the players at least mid in support have played together before. Uh, Ken B is an aggressive jungler, and so like he is going to, I'm sure, get that support yeah. from Ignar as well. And Loss has had the experience when he was on TSM of like having low resources and playing on his own. And so I think already from the outset of building this roster, it makes sense. I think you know you're asking what you want to see. They were the 10th place team last split. I just want to see better than that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's not like Fair. they need to. I want to see them break up the league. People see that potential when you put Poe and Ignar together, and Ken B, who is the hottest prospect out mm -hmm. of Academy in a long time. You know, basically, like, he's in that JoJo realm. He's in that Danny realm. People have been hyping this guy up for so long. I'm jumping in right there because you're talking about Ken V. Do Perhaps it. the most exciting piece of this roster news from Immortals is the newly acquired Academy superstar in Ken V. Let's meet him. For more, that will be the train. Has some good to offer himself, but Ken G just a little bit farther ahead as he is just freaking okay. everybody. The triple kill. Will it be the Penta? It's on the table. That will be the no quarter kill. Brown man, Ken Ken you better run for your life because Ken B is running. 
wants that Penta kill, and he will get it. The thing that's most excited about Kennedy joining the LCS is just how long it's taken and how long we've thought from the academy level he's ready for this jump. Hi, my name is Shane Kenneth Espinoza, also known as Kenby, and I'm gonna be the starting jungler for Immortals LCS. This has been coming for a long time, man. This has been coming for a long time. He's, gosh, he's had the stuff for so long. Even this last play, we were all surprised that he was still in Academy in the spring because this guy has shown head and above everybody else in Academy. Thank you for the fans that's supporting me. I can't wait to smurf in LCS. Oh, the health will take over. Is at least able to get the devour out of one with Ryoma getting a fat shield, but not enough life to be able to survive unless they can get Kenby. that kill. Kenby in the back line with Landry's fight. Iconic knocked into the air. No reset for Golden Guardians. History will repeat itself here. A quadruple for Kenby. As oh, Kenby's trying to get in there. So Here's Chime, looking to see if he can save his top laner. Here's the call of the Forge God. Knock up on a toy top death. Another stack for Kenby. Oh, and make boy. it two kills as they chase down Chime. So obviously that's the video that IMT put out on Kenby. I think the big thing to stress is how long people have been expecting to see him get picked up by an LCS team. And then additionally, he is from my perspective a like carry jungler yes. like kindred on my bingo card specifically because of this player well, I should have done that. Uh, yeah exactly yeah. right Raz, oh, no. where were you <laughs> uh so like a, a lot of his highlights are just going to be these massive team fights where he's popping off and this is where i'm looking at uh poe and ignar to try to like be like ignore i hope he able to link up with kenby and yes. be really aggressive on invades and then once again i'm looking at poe's forward percentage and whether he can keep stability in the mid lane press forward so they can do those invades and take over again. so oftentimes aggressive young player comes into the lcs and we immediately have some concerns right about oh are they going to be able to capture that same aggression are they going to you know temper themselves is it going to be as a result of nerves just better competition yeah. holding them down and as soon as an aggressive player doesn't get that footing it can go real bad real fast do you have similar concerns for a player like Hendy, especially raz when we take into account the meta that we've moved into and the fact that we're not seeing kills come through very early on into the game. Is this a concern for him? Is this the is this a bad meta for him to be making his debut in? Yes and no, but mostly no. I say yes okay. because I do think that the um, the jungle pool, everyone has said the same. Jungle pool in the LCS is the most competitive. It's the yep. strongest one. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I think amongst all of the current junglers, definitely... I, I would rate him lower just because I believe in a lot of the other junglers just being incredibly strong. Um, mostly no, just because I've seen him play when he was beh uh, behind pace in games. Uh, his day versus the Iron Golden Guardian had me in 2020, 2020. Like, he was behind, but he traded pace playing intelligently across the map. He was just recognizing and getting his team on the same page in certain things. We even saw that in the Proving Grounds finals last we saw him, where when he's behind, he's not doing anything egregious. He's, he's generally playing a smart game, and I expect him to, uh, to do the same thing when he's in this team. Well, his medal will be tested today yeah. against the likes of Santorin. We'll see how that matchup plays out, but we're just going to use that to kind of transition over to Team Liquid here. Mark, this is a team that, by all accounts, has thrown their wallet you know, at, at, as a solution, rather, to winning championships. And it, it's been a little bit now. It's, they, starting, it's pressure time. They're a great team. They're always at the top of the standings, but it's been a while since they've been the best team. Last time was 2019 summer that they lifted the trophy, and that was led by Doublelift. And ever since then, they have not picked up the trophy. The only consistent member is Core JJ. They have won some lock-in tournaments, but no titles, and they have not gotten out of groups at Worlds in three years either. Three and three and out. And while they are a great team, they're not living up to the standards that they're setting for themselves with the rosters that they're putting together. They want to win championships. They want to make noise at international competition. And by their own standards, you can see yeah. last split was a massive disappointment. Reverse sweep into actual sweep is not how you want to end a spring split. Well, with this team specifically, they have said, like, this is why we wanted this lineup of players. We want to mm -hmm. go to international competitions and we want to have success. And this kind of roster building also, even with the championship gap, I think has kind of defined the way that other North American teams have done their scouting and have put together their rosters. Yeah, and when you take a step back, obviously in hindsight, you see a lot of those rosters and you kind of question it. But at the time when you see those moves, these are big moves. You bring in Brox, who was in the world's finals yep. with Fnatic, yeah. right? That was a big name move, making that choice because they felt like he had a higher ceiling than Xmithy. And so like, you're making these cho choices with the 
full sole objective of winning a championship. Right. It's been a long time. Split oh, after split. Time and time again, right, Alfari? You had impact at one point, and then you go to Alfari, right? And and from there, as you mentioned, Santor now swapping over yeah. as well. Yeah, there's been tons of investment from this organization. So I guess it, it just comes down to when when do we start the clock on him, right? Like at what point do you really start to say it, it is this split or or you got to really think you're well, a pro. Yeah, and that's why I want to say they're a great team, but by their own standards, they are on that same trajectory based off how spring split ended of, again, failing to live up to their own standards. All right, well, we'll see if they can kick off the summer split on the right foot here today up against a revamped Immortals Progressive. With that, we're tossing over to the Tigers and Jack to get us into our fourth game of the day. Thank you, Dash. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the arena. I've We're got back. Jat here. Are you excited for our fourth game of the day? I am. I'm refreshed and, and full of energy. I know the analyst desk had some moments where they were saying the pace of play was a little bit slow. It, I think it could just be efficient, personally. Mm -hmm. So we haven't started the game yet. No, when we start the game, I'm going to cut the story short. But I was just on a road trip. If you're going 80, your gas mileage is not very efficient. There's a sweet spot of wind resistance around like 55 that is just, just very efficient. So it's a chance with current gas prices that the LCS teams are just trying to play efficiently. <laughs> I live for the moments in which you bring League of Legends out to real world yeah. examples. It's really high in California right now. So you gotta make sure you're not burning too hard. I hear the pain in your voice, Chad. I hear the pain in your voice. But a lot of joy to be had from the audience. If you are an Immortals fan, there's a different look in this roster coming through, which yes. removes all expectations versus Team Liquid that have a lot of those popular players that you're looking to lead that squad. Absolutely. And the entire Team Liquid squad also spent a good chunk of the split between spring and summer in Korea trying to hone their skills. I know. Core JJ actually ended up doing two separate Korean boot camps. He went himself when the split ended, and then when the Team Liquid team went, he obviously came along. But Kenvi is the most flashy thing that we're seeing on the LCS stage, even though if you're an Academy Enjoyer or an Amateur Enjoyer, he spent two years within the 100 Thieves organization and is finally getting a shot. Yes, we just heard from the hosts of Academy in that Immortal piece how excited a lot of that scene is. Anyone who has seen Kenvi in the past, as they talked about on the desk, knows his carry potential. And now we're looking for the newest member of Immortals, the one they are looking to build around. And what way to try and make a statement by locking into Leah first? Yeah, and I think this can also be a flex pick. It's something Power of Evil or Kenvi could end up playing. And it's not something we've seen on blue side as first pick today. Lucian is a really interesting one for me. I had a conversation with Freak in the caster room beforehand because even though it's one of the highest presence champions on this patch, it had a very low win rate. But part of that was because it's always picked first on blue side when it's available. So. Coming over to red side for Team Liquid, I do like being able to lock the Lucian Nami just like that. He's still being able to lock it in with probably the most prominent support we've seen with him as of late. Just always willing to be complimented by those enchanters. For Immortals, their response is bringing in the Renata Glask in that support yeah. position here to accompany Callista. I think that's going to be a very explosive bottom lane. Callista is something that has been banned the majority of the day. So a lot of fireworks and two lane dominant 80 carries and Lucian and Callista going up against each other. And the things that we have seen in any other time this combination has come through, through other regions, as well as some of the Academy games coming into this week, having Renata Glask able to be thrown in there and follow yep. up is an interesting combination at that. Wukong also extremely high presence across all leagues. A flex pick at that, but we see him in that jungle position time and time again. And I think Santorin will be a really good pilot of this pick. He's always able to find creative gank paths on anything he plays. So having a champion like Wukong that can sneak over walls to surprise the opponent, I think is right in his wheelhouse. See where he decides to facilitate as we go through the remainder of these bands. Fiora already making an appearance on the day and yeah. King Plank so high in presence as well because of how you can affect the later part of the map or the alternative parts of the map rather and scaling into that effective threat from the top lane.
Yeah, and based on the fact that TL is targeting a top lane ban with uh, both mid and top lane likely being the two roles that haven't been picked, it uh, makes me think that they want to pick their top laner on four here, uh, and they're trying to ban out counters. So I'm ex And also Ari would be a ban because they don't want Immortals to have a good blind pick option in mid. So with the comp so far, I think we're going to see a, a tank pick for Bwipo on four here, maybe Ornn. And one of the things that he has offered to this team is how flexible he can be. So yeah. when you're looking at the changes in the meta and what's coming through, you want him to be that pillar of strength for Team yeah. Liquid's side. Whereas Immortals, they love to play around Revenge and trying to reserve a great pick for him to play towards. Mm -hmm. Revenge uh, often wants to go for counter pick, and Immortals ended up playing around him a lot last split, but didn't necessarily find that much success. Interestingly enough, e even though like the bands are pointing me to picking Bwipo's pick on four here, it's not what Team Liquid did that often in spring, uh, because almost always they would wait until the fifth pick so Bwipo could just pick whatever he wanted. And I, I think Bwipo had a really unfortunate arc last split because he started off lock and tournament in spring to me looking like a potential MVP of the league. But by the end of it, I think almost single-handedly lost them several games. So he's going to be extremely hungry to prove himself. And I think if Team Liquid would have blind picked him something like Orn, that would have been a lack of confidence and maybe a change in style for Team Liquid coming into summer here. But with the TF being blinded and waiting for Bwipo to be able to pick on five, I do think it is allowing Bwipo the space to redeem himself as well as preventing revenge from being able to get counterpicked. And on that TF, we saw a little bit in LEC this morning, now here in the LCS. So many of the mid laners, even in the interviews thus far today, talked about how prominent control mages are and getting to scale yes. through. Hmm, I wonder who likes picks like that? <laughs> I wonder. Power of Evil, uh, the master of the third dragon fight, or the fourth dragon <laughs> fight, when he has 300 CS and three items. But the NAR pick, even though there was the singed hover that many people would have liked, uh, is almost never going to happen because with Victor Talia, you already have two magic damage dealers, which almost necessitates you do physical damage in the top lane. And we get to see Olaf, which could be jungle or could just be Bwipo playing in the top lane. I wonder if they're actually going to flex Wukong top into the Gnar. I don't know if TL's done with this funny business yet. And when talking about the fact that Bwipo started so strong in the spring, as you were mentioning, a lot yeah. of that came from that flexibility, really increasing that champion pool. And that is something that Team Liquid has in the arsenal. We can always threaten that flex over. Don't see any movement right now, now though. Yeah. So it seems that it's a Wukong in that jungle position. Yeah, Olaf will be in the top lane. He's actually much more prioritized in the top lane, uh, just in summer split across regions. So. Will be interesting to see how Whippo pilots that and if they can use it for some good early pressure. And so Immortals, Team Liquid, full compositions locked in here. I mean, for Immortals, finishing in spring in 10th place, the nice thing about that is it leaves nowhere to go but up. And maybe <laughs> a refreshment of mind, as we heard from Revenge going yeah. into this matchup, having everyone on the same page with that level of work ethic so they can come through completely renewed. Yeah, mirror images of each other in terms of the record last split, 13 and five for Team Liquid in spring, five and 13 for Immortals. I'm so curious to see how they do when they take the rift right now. Who are you having faith in, Jet, in terms of the comps that we see and what they're bringing to the table? I mean, I think just looking at the rosters, you're going to favor Team Liquid because they were the best regular season team in spring and Immortals was the worst. It's hard to say where the meta is actually going to be going, uh, but I'm looking for Team Liquid really trying to dominate the bottom lane with the Twisted Fate pick and the Lucian Nami, trying to stack early dragons and then win through a soul. Both teams taken to the rift right now in game number four. And with that being said, on the Team Liquid side, it's very known a lot of the ways they've liked to play in the past in terms of that comfort. And we're looking at this meta. We're scaling, going for that later game. Yeah. Having that stability early can be such a benefit. So we'll have to see how they decide to take against Immortals in this game at the start. Absolutely. And I think the durability conversation is going to be uh, a continuous conversation, shall we say, throughout kind of global League of Legends. So we'll continue that later this game. As far as finding out a mortal strategy going into this game against Team Liquid, we got Pastry Time standing on by with Coach Nightshare. Thank you very much. I am standing by with the coach of IMT. First things first, it's an obvious one. How are you feeling about the draft, especially getting Talia so early on? Uh, so we basically uh, um, 
practiced a lot of bot lane matchups in this meta, and we think that Kalisto Renata is winning against Lushiname. So we prepared that, and with, um, we were like willing to first pick Talia because of the E, how the E works, uh, and both Kalista and Lucian sort of needs to use the dashes in team fights. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to like stop that a bit with the Talia, and then we're just like sort of trading. If if they would take the Kalista and Alta, we would just like handshake the the Lucian army. Yeah, makes sense. And then of course the question kind of everyone's going to be thinking about lots of changes from in the offseason, the big one obviously being Kenvi. Uh, what should we expect as fans from the Immortals side from Kenvi? I mean, Ken is really insane. His hands are insane and his mechanics are insane. And he's very young, talented and hungry. So he will be eager to show uh, how he is actually better than the, the, the rest of the competition. All right, excited to see him. Smurf, thank you for joining me. Go ahead and watch that game. We'll throw it on back to the Tigress. Kenvi will be trying to make his mark in this game, but bringing some of that attention down here to the bot lane, we heard some on the ADC matchup, but we get Ignar back too. And yeah. what a way to bring him back on a champion that wasn't around the last time he was in professional play. Yeah, there's actually so much to talk about <laughs> going off yeah. of that interview and thinking about all the storylines with these two teams. Let's, let's dive into that bottom lane though, because I love it that we were able to get that interview from Pastry Time and actually hear what each team thinks of the matchup. So they're saying Callista Renata, they think they can win against Lucianami. And I think that is, I mean, it is true based off their scrims, but the question will be, does that translate to stage? And does that translate to playing against Han Sama and Core JJ? But I actually do really think, personally, bot prio and 80 carry supremacy is one of the ways to win on this patch. So as you see Santorin having that in mind, goes bot right away. Now already present here. Kenvi's in the area as well. The flash is forward to get first blood for Team Liquid. Love that. And look at what Santorin did. He skipped Krugs and Wolves so that he could be there faster. So even though Kenvi had a camp advantage, he wasn't there in time to support that play. Five summoner spells burned by Team Liquid to get that first blood, but it goes on to Santorin, and that more than makes up for the fact that he skipped a camp. The full commitment to the gank from Team Liquid's side, very clean, we willing to expel those summoners to secure. Yeah, let's watch this one more time. As we mentioned in Champ Select, Santorin so sneaky finding ways over the wall. So Immortals is pushed up because they have a ward in that river bush. They see Santorin, but it's too late since he came through the back of the pit. Lost burns his flash early, so Santorin knows he can guaranteed reach him with flash E, and he gets the kill. Couple of buffs in tow, returning to the jungle for him. So early lead for Team Liquid on this bot lane is definitely a strength that they can pull from. The scuttle was also something that he was able to take along the way, yep. so securing some of that vision extended across the riverside with 40 seconds to go on that first Drake spawning. Though a lot of fights for the first Drake have been a lot more prolonged within these patches. Absolutely, and the first Drake being Cloud actually has a chance to decelerate the game further. That dragon does more damage than all the others, so it is very difficult to solo, especially with Santorin only being just now level four. So I actually don't think Santorin can safely kill that. Uh, so if Team Liquid is to get the dragon, I think it would be when Bjergsen hits six, Lost has no summoner spells, and they're trying to push their advantage. So Bjergsen would gank bot, they'd kill Lost, and that's how they would get dragon. And all the while, with those advantages that Team Liquid have been setting up over on that bot side, Revenge now getting his first back, having pushed the waves forward in yep. that top lane matchup, yep. having that range at his availability for that. So Immortals still having somewhere on this map that they can play towards Scuttle secured for them on that side as well. Yeah, I, I, even though I think the Ninja Tabai make it really good for Revenge to try and play aggressive and make it really difficult to get killed by a Wukong gank, I don't necessarily know if that's going to do much to break open this game. I think uh, Team Liquid is, is holding this wave in a really tricky spot for Immortals to deal with because normally they could just ward the river and continue to push their advantage, but the fact that Lost has no summer spells and Bjergsen is six with the wave pushed in means they, they're, they're trapped. That's why Kemi's actually just stuck here because they need to guard against the Twisted Fate or Wukong game. And that, that Twisted Fate, Bjergsen backing right now because Destiny is available. That ever-pressing threat from them. Blast cone over oh, the wall for Santorin to get through. A double stun on two. Lost is marked low once again. The work round right oh. below. Should be another hit. The bailout is here only temporarily. Han Sama picks up the kill. And didn't we just talk about this? How is Team Liquid going to get Dragon? Lost is going to be pushed up. Twisted Fate is going to gank bottom. And then they could go for Drake. What? 
Team Liquid doesn't want to do, though, is take the dragon. So it was really close. It was really <laughs> close to being there. Sandor and, and Bjergsen are running back to lane to get farmed. But the execution here actually, I think, surprised Immortals because what's happening here is Bjergsen has gone back to base. He actually teleports bottom lane, then alts in, which will be an instant death. It's a large investment of resources, but I think worth it in the end. We've seen such important Aqua Prisons from a lot of Namis out there. And as soon as you're locked down that early, when everyone's feeling pretty squishy, it's a good place to be on the Nami side. One thing that we haven't talked about in this game, and I, I actually tend to bring this up a lot of times in Power of Evil matchups, is... Just gonna watch this for a second. Right a over damage. the wall, Power of Evil, throwing down the Chaos Storm. It's in pursuit. Core JJ's already made his rotation, but so has Ignar. Ignar being equally willing to unlock himself from lane. Yeah, both supports when they recall run out mid to, to top Yerkson up, and that's actually a pretty big win for TL, because now PoE uh, has very little damage in a trade. But uh, I don't think there's a champion in the game that Power of Evil, even if he'll admit it or not, dislikes more than Twisted Fate. Uh, just throughout his competitive history, uh, Power of Evil has never been able to win at a high rate with Twisted Fate and also loses at a very high rate to Twisted Fate. <laughs> because something that he is so good at is consistently farming and being a team fight force. So when he is playing Twisted Fate, that typically doesn't work because Twisted Fate wants to be able to push, roam, and playmate but also against Twisted Fate, since PoE isn't a player who punishes the opponent hard in lane, it ends up also giving Twisted Fate too much freedom. So uh, as we saw already with the first gank by Bjergsen, notice how he's not even down in CS, despite using his ultimate and his teleport for that gank bottom. So really kind of Twisted Fate is a bit of PoE's Achilles heel. A good read from Team Liquid, considering everyone when looking at this Immortal squad, as Team Liquid is currently on Rift Herald. We'll have to see if Revenge actually wants to do anything about this. Whippo's made his rotation through as well. And the majority of IMT, except for Lost, are here. Boomerang onto Whippo. Got some more work around. Oh, Lashes forward. In. Stun on to Kenby, and he goes down. Ignore from the opposite side, but they can't answer back. They lose their jungler here. That kind of goes from bad to worse. So I think Immortals was stuck between decisions there because they had a temporary numbers advantage since Ignar was ahead of Core JJ on the move up, but Han Sam was also moving and Lost was in lane. So it was going to be short-lived and that gave Team Liquid a lot of confidence to be able to go in for the fight. Getting the Rift Herald while also getting Kenby's Flash and killing them uh, kind of gives them their cake and the ability to eat it. So 2,000 gold lead with Rift Herald, Team Liquid in absolute control of this one. A bounty here for Santorin off of that action. We'll see a revenge hop away right now as they return to the 1v1 here in the top lane. But back to part of that note on TF, where that's a great read from Team Liquid going into mm -hmm. the squad from Immortals because a lot of people were thinking, okay, Ignar reunited with PoE. We can expect him to play up towards that direction, mm -hmm. wanting to lock themselves in lane that much more. So if that's what you're expecting from their side, you prepare accordingly. And these two teams are not very familiar with the state of the game for either squad right now because they yep. do not scrim against each other. So True. it's their first meeting here unknown strats for both squads. Yeah, there is possibly some bad blood between Gilioto, who is the former head coach of Immortals, but uh, that is true that they do not scrim each other, so definitely a fresh matchup. That doesn't mean they're not familiar with each other, true. though. Uh, especially thinking back to the 2020 FlyQuest roster where Santor and Power of Evil and Ignar nearly won the split both in spring and in summer, but fell just short and then had a three and three run at Worlds. But as you see, they've already swapped now and they're ganking again. Revenge is the target, goes the wayside. Kenvy is here for some additional oh! protection, throws up the Weaver's Wall to target three of them and the tower is enough of protection. <laughs> Not quite. Tidal wave here. It still gives them a lot of time on this turret. I think ideally they wanted to be able to get the kill, kill the turrets and drop the Herald, but now PoE has made his way up and a lot has been expended by Team Liquid in that gank. A 1v4 is a tall task, though. And Death Ray for a little bit of poke onto Han Sama. Does have the ultimate to throw down, but Team Liquid, they read this. They want to back off. We still have three minutes on the clock before any of these plates come down, so chipping away all the while to try and extend a gold lead. We also talked before the game a lot about Kenby 
I think he is a very exciting prospect. Um, so far, this is an unfortunate debut game for him because, as we've noted, he was 17 years old when he joined the Hunter Thieves organization, started an amateur, spent a year and a half in academy, and I think there's, there's also this... When, when you are a very talented academy player, I think there is definitely a want to debut on a top team because you want to be able to allow your skills to shine through. In this game for Kenvi, if we think about the path, it's like, well, he did five camps and Santorin did four, and then his 80 carry died. And everything since that point has been a little bit of a chain reaction. So even though, like, his mechanics are incredible, he's this young talent, he, he, he can do amazing things in team fights, like, a lot of the way Team Liquid beats people it doesn't allow them to show off their hands because they had that one mistake early and Team Liquid has been able to punish it. But again, like there's some hands from Hansama flashing away from the Callista ult to make it so Immortals can't do anything. But, but Team Liquid, what I'm trying to say, doesn't give you very many windows to do things. They are a great team at punishing mistakes as a team that tries their best to make very few on their mm -hmm, own mm -hmm. with whatever strategy they bring through. All of that being said, everything we're hearing is that Kenvi wanted to join this Immortal squad. Yep. They have been signed all the way through 2024. So looking at the development as we see the fight come through, Calling does get some damage onto Kenvi, but the Cyclone into the back and the wave also getting a knock up. Lost has to retreat under the turret. Once again, they do have Shelly also on the attack, wanting to target this tower. Teleport coming in for Team Liquid side to ensure that they have Whoa. the numbers advantage. Root over the wall onto Bjergsen. Can be throwing out the cues as much as he possibly can. The charge effective and the disengage ensues. I believe Kenby's flash had basically just come back. So I, I think if you're if you're trying to time things, Bjergsen was very much thinking that he was going to be able to kill Kenby there. Uh, but yeah, it, it was like within a couple of seconds of the cooldown being able to use it again. So narrowly missed kill there. There's that Olaf. Meanwhile, all activated from Whippo. Doesn't matter that the rage comes on through for Nar. He goes down, whimpering. Whippo's back. Whippo back, baby. <laughs> Haven't seen him uh, exceed with these fifth pick, counter pick solo kills, but he does one right there. As they've been left alone for a long time. Over yeah, they haven't so. really been a part of the game. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, he's now 1,300 gold up on Revenge. They have had to swap back and forth a little bit, so there's definitely factors that have influenced that lane that we haven't necessarily been privy to, but uh, 26 CS advantage, multiple plates, and a solo kill put him healthily ahead. Already getting pretty big. Mythic achieved for him ahead of his laner. So you can already see that power in the side lanes, making sure that wave gets shoved. Bot, which gives the room for Santorin to target this dragon first of the game. Yeah. So this would be the only concern if your Team Liquid is that the first dragon is going down this late at 14 minutes. So even if you're thinking perfect respawn killing, you're going to get second dragon at 19.30, third dragon at 24.30, and then Soul around 30 minutes. Um, and we haven't really seen that many games move towards conclusion without some form of dragon stacking. So the question will really be like, is this two and a half thousand gold lead in Twisted Fate enough to snowball this lead? Or are you gonna allow power people to keep getting items and, and eventually oh, win? But once in the meantime- Gun hits on Lost Bailout, can't cut it. Team Liquid, take him down. Uh, in the meantime, Lost is going to continue to get killed. And we'll see how much that speeds up the game. Oh man, this is a rough one. It's it's so interesting too, as they start up this next Rift Herald, which I don't think Immortals is going to contest, that uh, we got to see the coach interview. And I really hope this doesn't dissuade them from doing them in the future. But when he mentions that they think the Callista Renata is good into the Lushinami, that actually hasn't been disproven this game. What has been proven is that Callista Renata loses to uh, four man and three man ganks because they have just been able to send everyone that lost this game. Whereas uh, Ken V's presence is usually very responsive to where Team Liquid have been able to keep right. that control and clearly showing where they want to pressure things even ever since that swap happened over top. That's just where all of the action comes through. And because of that, it does mean that second Rift Herald getting secured for Team Liquid side. There's a lot of turrets that have already been chunked down as well. Thank you to Whippo in the bot for yep. making that happen. Stride Breaker on Olaf as well. I think that's a good purchase. He's able to get close with Ghost. Then once he lands an X, he'll be able to slow them much more with the active. And 
They're going for more. He does have flash, but he's rooted a lot. They got two here. Revenge, he's alone. Wants to use the flash. Saying, oh, hey, I've got it here too. Can I get there? Can I get there? I cannot. Oh, watch this too. Renata might be in trouble. Ignar sandwiched between Santorin, who keeps his eyes on Power of Evil. Cycloning around. Hansama is here for the assistance as well. Kill credit going to Hansama himself. The Berserker is not enough for Ignar to save his life. 7-0. So the snowball seems to be online. Able to get kills frequently, but all right, second turret down, six and a half thousand gold. This is this is something I want to be able to track uh, since we have seen so many games go towards scaling. Like, can a team actually have this five thousand gold to sixty minutes and make it a quick win? Can Team Liquid win this game before thirty minutes? I think will be just an interesting inflection point for me when I'm trying to figure out this durability update. Or does it just continually get pushed on out because of those late drakes and that yeah. need and that feeling that I have to wait until those late game objectives are available to be able to close? Yeah, I mean, Hansama is very accelerated. Gale Force Collector completed already before anyone on the immortal side has enough base armor to really have any resistance for that little bit of lethality he's been able to build up. So, like at, at this power spike, when Hansama hits level 11, a uh, culling is going to be able to completely annihilate at least one health bar. So I, I think Team Liquid can do it, but if they can't, then either it's a bad sign for Team Liquid or a bad sign for the patch. One of the two. So what are Immortals looking at here, though? If they're down yeah. right now, 5.4k FTX gold advantage against them, how do they bring it back? Yeah, they uh, just to make sure this works. They want to keep this alive. Uh, for as long as possible, because if they can control that mid turret, it does make it more difficult for Team Liquid to accelerate the game, because if Team Liquid wants to try and push into these second tier turrets down here, um, it is difficult to do that when their lines are all straight from here. Once they have this down, they can kind of go from, from a much closer proximity in the jungle and really start taking over. So how long can they keep up this strength in the mid game in the mid lane as well? Because for Team Liquid, even though they have seven kills right now, we have seen some games turned by a single fight yep. if you can last that long. So Immortals potentially looking for that opportunity to do so, but oh, getting hello. collapsed upon because there's a teleport right behind them. They have their own teleport coming through so as well. But Bwipo, he's so fast. He's slamming through. He got the vicious strikes. He got everything going for him. He even gets the flash out of him beforehand. Here's a Fates call from Lost. Throws out Ignar. No knock a follow up though here. Bwipo, he's going to keep slamming away. Even with the Aqua Prison right below Revenge's feet. That's enough to kill them. They've got three down on Immortal's side. And T Liquid, they want more. Power of Evil on the retreat. The flash over the wall from Bjergsen into stasis. He goes, wants to get the handshake. Ignar oh, is no, going no, no. for it. But the way right off the back end, Power of Evil, he falls. Ignar, the only one alive from Immortal's side. That is how you do it. Just a freight train. Uh, that's what Bwipo became when he teleported in there. And they still had the second Rift Herald. So not only can they break the mid outer, they can break the mid secondary as well. This is a slaughter. 8.5k now in that gold lead. Second dragon falling in Team Liquid's favor. Watch this one more time. You can see Lost trying to play a little aggressive. Uh, this is one thing Kalista tries to do is, unlike other AD carries, tries to make plays in the side lane, but they push up a little bit too far. Whippo teleports between lanes and they clean up, but we have more action already. Whippo still flash, Whippo still goes for it, can be still goes down. Immortals have the majority of their team here, but that tower is still standing for Team Liquid on the top side. On the bright side, Immortals now has objective bounties. They've turned on. So you never know. Boom. You never know. Something could happen. Uh, but I, I will, I'll be a bit of an Immortals apologist for a second. Because even under ideal circumstances, Team Liquid's going to be a big favorite over Immortals. But if you follow Power of Evil on social media, you will see he basically got into Los Angeles yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah, so they really have not had time to practice as a team. And they're coming up against a Team Liquid team who's now doing Varen. Going to pause for a second on this story. They're burning it down, calling coming out. Nar takes most of it, but the bubble's enough to finish him off. Immortals can't contest. But even with that, as this Baron buff is over onto Team Liquid's side, yes, Immortals Power of Evil just got here yesterday. Yes. They had one scrim before they came onto the stage. Yes, so one scrim with Power of Evil. Kenby's first LCS game hasn't played with Power of Evil. 
And he's going up against a Team Liquid team who has five years plus experience on every single player and has made no roster changes from the spring to summer split. And even though they had a disappointing end, getting swept by Evil Geniuses in finals weekend was the best regular season team in spring. So this was not a fair fight, is what I'm trying to say. For Team Liquid side, this is what you want to see. 11.1k yes. FTX gold advantage and going against a team with roster changes and a new addition rookie in that jungle position, they better be dominating. Yeah. For Immortals, you want to take what you can from it, and if you can push forward and really show that Kenvi is going to get used to the squad and they're going to work together, then that's a great place to be. But uh, it's only 22 minutes into the game, Jet. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. only 22. Anything can happen. Anything. Uh, actually, I see no dragons, no turrets, no barons, no kills. I'm not sure if there were no plates, but we're flirting with perfect game territory here for Team Liquid. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't have the official definition of if you need to be plateless with the perfect game since plates are a recent Prior to, to the plates, game. it wouldn't yeah. matter. It's like making the achievement harder to get. But I feel like it doesn't count. I feel like if, if even a plate a goes plate, down? If ah. before you could get a percentage of yeah. a turret and it still count as a right? perfect game, then why would now the losing team getting a plate yeah. mean that it's no longer a perfect game? I think that's a great question. So, we might there be was, on track for that. There's literally no official board to give us a ruling, so we get to decide. <laughs> right uh, here, right now. For our conversation. It'll change in some other future conversation, but for our conversation, I'm saying if Team Liquid doesn't die or give up a turret, this is going to be my perfect game for them. Yep, I think it counts. I think it counts. Five kills on Tabwipo right now. Han yeah. Sama is getting equally strong, and we know the late game is where he loves to be anyways. And perfect mm -hmm. positioning in a lot of the team fights and on this Lucian zoning off so much with that calling every time they do run into Immortals. And for Immortals right now, you've got over a minute until that next Dragon spawns. That mm -hmm. full point for Team Liquid. And you have to decide if you're going to start contesting these or just try and minimize losses. Right now, the Baron buff yeah. is going to expire. So this whole last few minutes, you are just trying to hold out as much as possible. Exactly. I think the, the Dragon is completely uncontestable. I think Immortals at this point is really just hoping Team Liquid uh, does something foolish and that they can pick up a few kills. But fr from the Team Liquid side, this, this is the response you want to see from them after such a devastating end to the Spring Split. You never know how a team is going to respond to a loss like that, especially a team of so many veterans with such high expectations. Because, like, frankly, looking at the roster, anything that isn't back-to-back -back LCS titles is a disappointment. So getting the Summer Split title is still actually expected from them, if I uh, could imagine correctly, and then also trying to make a big run at Worlds. So being able to have this level of clean play this early in the Spring Split means they... They took that defeat to heart and really with the Korean boot camp trying to start the season off in a big way, they're doing that right now. See if they can make the play for it. Santorin into the back line once more. Power of Evil into Stasis and as soon as he comes up that wave helps finish him off. Hansama picking up the kill onto one. Team Liquid pushing on through. Can be and lost. It's just them and Team Liquid looking strong. That means they can target this inhibitor. They've got a little bit of a wave with them with plenty of teammates to boot. The entire five stack still alive and at it. How many cues can you throw off before you throw in the towel alongside those rocks? Can be Immortals Nexus now targeted. Team Liquid making a statement at the start of their summer split. A perfect Perfect start for Team Liquid in summer. 16 kills, zero death, no turrets, no Rift Heralds, no objectives to the helpless Immortals team in this one. Team Liquid all smiles. All the boot camps, all of the meditation, I'm sure they did everything to make sure they came in with fresh faces. It's worked out here against Immortals. And Team Liquid, I know that they are gunning for that trophy. They're oh, yeah. always looking for that, and you want to start off strong. Yeah, starting off strong, wanting to maintain that power. 13 and 5 last spring, definitely going to try and outdo that here. Maybe a little bit of fan buff as well. 
Welcome back, fans, to the summer split. Didn't see you here in the regular season of spring. Rough start for Kenby, but uh, you can forget this one quick if they do well tomorrow. That was always the consideration for a mortal side when you came in and you saw that they're facing off against Team Liquid. Yeah who are at the top of so many people's expectations. Yeah. Now it's teaching Kenby what it's like to come onto the LCS stage, go into a hard matchup, and then bounce back in a super week where you got three games that you got to go through. Yeah, it says something when you when you kind of look across the LCS landscape and you see uh, power rankings. For, for I watched the dive, I saw Mark Z's power rankings, and even though Team Liquid didn't win the split, in spring, Team Liquid's number one over and over again. And that says so much about people's faith in their players, their ability to bounce back, and also their ability to be consistent throughout a 18 game regular season. So they need to dominate games like this. This was still above expectations, right? They were expected to win, but they weren't necessarily expected to 25 minutes, 16 kill to zero, 16,000 gold league, perfect game. So that's a good start for TL. And early on in the spring, when they came through with all of these players that had so much experience, they yeah. had a lot of games where it felt like they could kind of just do whatever they were feeling like to a degree because yeah. there's so much versatility from them. Even Bjergsen in an interview saying, I don't feel like I did anything yeah. in that game because I had all these different carries. Towards the end, it felt like, okay, what are the identities as a squad that you are going to adopt when mm -hmm. you are in these best ofs later? And a lot of other teams are indexing into one style. Now they're starting off strong. They have a whole regular season to do that. Yeah, and if you... If we remember what a lot of their games looked like, even though they were winning a ton of games in spring, there was that like classic mid-game TL throw where the game would extend and then they still have to win. They didn't have that. It's, it's a good feeling. Yeah, Team Liquid coming through, really smashing it in their first game of summer. We are joining Pastry Time and Team Liquid Honda's own Han Sama for a Verizon post-game interview. Thank you very much. I am here with the victorious Han Sama of Team Liquid. There are a lot of fans in here. <laughs> there are a lot of Hans Sama fans here. How does it feel to be back in the arena here with the audience? Uh, it feels really awesome. I'm really happy that everyone uh, gets to be there and watch uh, us. It makes me feel really exciting to uh, perform even better. Um, and uh, we didn't have that before. I, I missed it a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be playing there in the studio with uh, the fans here. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> So speaking of performance, not a bad game for Team Liquid to open up the season. How did it feel kind of being back here and, and, and playing this game? looked very clean from the Team Liquid side. Um, yeah, it looks, um, it looks like all our timings were successful. Uh, we, we tried to be uh, like very proactive. This I got uh, Lucian on my first game. It's nice. Um, I think it feels really nice to be back uh, start off a new split with Team Liquid and doing a good, strong first game. We didn't die. No one died. <laughs> we were focused. Uh, actually, at the end, uh, we were really focused at, about not dying. <laughs> I wanted to make a perfect game. No, no more uh, yeah, really happy with the victory we had. And of course, leading up to that, uh, what has Team Liquid been doing? I know a lot of different teams have been boot camping, but how is your off-season kind of preparing for this summer? I think my off-season was amazing. Um, I would say that last split, I didn't have the perfect, not perfect, but the really good um, mindset or mental state or whatever. But this off season, I feel like it uh, helped me a lot to prepare my mindset for this uh, summer split. And I think everything we did as a team, the current bootcamp and the things we talked about, I think it's been really awesome. And I'm really excited to see how um, our team, Team Liquid Honda, will go. <laughs> Well, I'm sure everyone's excited. Hans, thank you so much for joining me. Congratulations on the win today. Thank you, thank you. All right, with that, we have one more game, but before we get there, we'll throw it a break. We'll see you shortly. Don't go too far. What you playing? A very serious game, but these in-game purchases are adding up. Oh, State Farm has race to fit your budget? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Oh. 